Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Reverend Ken Angiro here again, bringing you a new uh, session of the Eagles class. The Eagles class, wonderful. A class for believers who aspire to go deeper in the word of God and to so higher in greater heights in their life to fulfill their destinies. And I'm so excited to uh, bring you the word of God once again. And before I bring you the word of God, let me just give you a recap of what we had the last session. I was teaching about dealing with a wounded spirit. And when we're talking about that, I came to say that uh, you've got to uh, evaluate to know that you, you are wounded first of all. You have to do a diagnosis and we have to do the, the sources of a wounded spirit. Uh, if you can remember, I talked about self-inflicted wounds. And under self-inflicted wounds, there are people that uh, inflict themselves through sin or through blunder or blunder or mistakes or even through false or unrealistic expectations. And many have hurt themselves through that. And also, uh, we have people that have uh, what I call people-inflicted wounds, wounds that come from other people. And there are two main uh, sources of these. I've, I mentioned offenses, and we saw that it's impossible for offenses not to come. And so you cannot, you have, there's nothing you can do about it. Offenses must come. You've got to choose not to take offenses, but surely they will come. And then another way that uh, people can offer or can hurt us is through betrayal. And I said that the closer the relationship, the greater the impact of betrayal. And then we have the third way that uh, we get wounded in our spirit is through uh, tragedy or loss or circumstances. Or I even say God, because God is in control of circumstances. And then, and then we have tragedy or loss that have brought a lot of wounds in the hearts of people. And then we have uh, 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 things like uh, th that death that has come in. And I, I spoke about... Uh, God sometimes permits us to go through some things that hurt us. Uh, in scripture, it is said that uh, 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 even though he slays me, yet will I trust in him. God had allowed that Jesus had to take that cup in as much as Jesus said, Father, if it were possible, let there be an alternative. And, and, and God had to send angels to strengthen him because he had to drink of that cup. And some of us, there are things that we go through and we will not want to go through, but God has ordained that we go through them. And I remember telling us that uh, God will not allow you to go through what you cannot bear. Whatever you're going through, child of God, it may look to be so hard, but God has permitted it because he will also make a way out of the hardship and the temptation for you. So be confident that whatever you're going through has to go through the desk of God. God has to give it an approval and he knows that you will overcome. And today, by the grace of God, I want to bring to you another very important teaching about uh, fresh and renewed. Two words. The word new and the word fresh, they appear to be uh, somehow similar, but you're going to see it from the word of God. Fresh and renewed. And because this is Eagle's class, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, as the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, uh, 31, the Bible tells us even the youth can grow weary, but those who wait upon the Lord, the Bible says that they will they will, they will mount up with wings like eagles. That's where we get that title, Eagles Class. We mount up with wings like eagles. And I want you also to get this. The Bible tells us in uh, Psalm 103 and verse 5 that the Lord will satisfy our mouths with good things. And he also, he also says that he will renew our strength like eagles, renew our strength like eagles. So I entitled the message that we have this session, Fresh and Renewed. And I want to get a text in the Bible to support this. We're going to read from the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 16 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 9, verse 16 and verse 17. And I want to tell you, the Bible says in uh, Matthew 9, 16 and 17, I read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth 
on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Let me read again verse 17 for emphasis. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to focus on these words, new, 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 new. It's very, very important. Because most of us, when we talk about new, sometimes we say something is new. It's, it's that brand new. It's, it's not been there before. It's, it's just calm. It's a new cloth. Because it has not been used before, it's new. It's from the shop, it's from the factory. It has not been used before. And that's an element of new. But there's the element of renewed that we need to talk about. This word new that I mentioned first is the word fresh. It is fresh. It has not been there before. It has just been created that is new. And when the Bible talks about new wine and a new wine skins, I would like to bring you to the Greek word. There are two Greek words that are used for this that are important for us to dissect. They are the words neos, N-E-O-S. And there's also another word, kainos, K-A-I-N-O-S, neos. And kainos. And I want to submit this to you. Neos is the word fresh, new, fresh. Something that has just been, it has not been there before. It's just brand new. It's fresh. That's the word neos. And when the Bible says new wine, it says that, that neos wine, fresh wine. But when you talk about new wine skins, the wine skins there is not the word. The Bible does not use the word neos. It uses the word kainos, K-A-I-N-O-S, which means renewed. It is now not fresh, but it means it has been there, but it has been made new again. And I'm speaking about this because I know there are eagles, young people as eagles that God is raising that are fresh. They are new. They have not been in the ministry before. They are just exploring new grounds. They are, they are walking, getting into uncharted waters in their lives. And that is just fresh. It's an experience they have not had. They are exploring grounds they have not been to before. That's the word new. But the, the nuance. But also, there are people that I address that have served God, have had a walk with God in their lives. And sometimes they are wearing out. They are getting tired. And I want to talk about renewal. The kainos. And so the wineskin, the vessel that were used to carry the wine had to be renewed. It may not be new in the terms of freshness. There were vessels that have been used before. And when new wine, when fresh wine was being brought, that fresh wine would come. It was quite acidic. Sometimes when you get, just get new uh, produce from, from the farms, like some of the fruits that we have are so concentrated in citric acid. They're so acidic. And so if they get a... Uh, an old wine skin, the, the wine skin would break. And when the wine skin broke, the wine would be spilled off and the wine skin was broken. So it was a loss for both the wine skin and the wine. There will be double loss. But now for us to be able to contain new wine that was fresh, we needed to get wine skins, not necessarily wine skins that have not been used before, but wine skins that have been used before. But for them to carry the new wine, they needed to be renewed. And we're going to talk about that process of renewal. Because child of God, wherever you are, some of you are in the business, some are in the ministry, and you, you, you have worked with God, and then you reach a point where you either burnt out, you gave up, and, and, you, and, and there's a new wave of the the spirit coming. We have heard of the prophetic word of the great end time revival. It has been spoken in our nation. Kenya is a springboard of revival. And God is going to get vessels that is going to use. Some are fresh who have never been in the ministry before. They are just fresh. They are new. Neos. But others are going to be the wine skins, the old wine skins that God had used before. But they are going to make adjustments in their lives. 
that they will be able to carry the new move of God, the new move of the Spirit, without losing the grace and without losing the vessels. Praise the Lord. And so that's what I'm talking about, renewed wineskins. So the word for wineskins is the word kainos. And the word for wine, the new wine, is the word neos. So neos is fresh, while kainos is the word renewed. Praise the Lord. So it is very important. The secret that the ego, the bad that the ego has, the bad renews. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 103. Your youth will be renewed. When your youth is renewed, it means your vigor is renewed. Your passion is renewed. Your strength is renewed. And I believe this is the secret that Caleb found out because when Caleb had gone to the promised land and he was going to, he was coming to Joshua asking for permission to go and, and, and attack the mountain to take Hebron. He said, give me this mountain. I am still as alive, as ardent as I was 45 years ago. At this time, Caleb was 85. I look at it, I wonder, an 85-year-old man saying he is able to fight as he was doing 45 years ago. The secret that Caleb knew was of renewal. And I believe by God's grace and by this word of God, some of you that are on the verge of giving up, this is a word that is going to speak into your life that you are going to be renewed. You are going to be revived. You are going to be rejuvenated. You are going to be useful again in the house of God. Our God is even a God of second chance. I remember Samson in the book of Judges. Remember Samson? Whatever happened in the life of Samson, he lost it. The Philistines captured it. They removed his vision. His eyes were removed. He went grinding the wheat of the Philistines. And, and the Bible says his hair began to grow. And when they took him into that big building and thousands of the Philistines gathered and they brought Samson to make sport of him, that they would he would dance as they were celebrating that God had, their gods had remembered them. And Samson asked for the pillars of the temple. When Samson went there, the Bible says he made a prayer. He said, God, give me one more chance that I may revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Let me die with the Philistines. And God had his prayer. And the Bible tells us that Samson killed more Philistines at his death than in his lifetime. God brought him back in a big bang. It's possible for God to look for a, a vessel that had been used and sometimes had been dumped. There are some of you that God had used you and for one reason or another, you feel uh, dumped, you feel misused, you feel tired, you feel worn out. There are some of you on the verge of quitting. You are no longer having a lot of interest in, in, in the work of God, in your work with God. I'm here today to bring the renewal that is going to come into your life by the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so this session, as I bring to you the word of the Lord, I want to really focus on renewed. Because we have God's generals, people that have served God that are so wounded. I was talking about uh, dealing with the wounded spirit uh, in the last, uh, uh, the previous session. But now I want to really bring it on this angle, renewal. You can rise up again. Your zeal for God can increase again. Your passion for the anointing, for the purpose of God in your life can be rekindled again. Your love for Christ rekindled again. It's very possible. And I want to talk about the process and I will borrow it from what the Jews used to do to the old wine skins. It's very, very important. Now, whenever the Jews had wine skins, that had not been used before. That is the word fresh wine skins. They just made them fresh from the skins and, and they would put new wine in this new wine skin. So the new wine skins were able to, to carry the new wine for some time and that would be good. And then after they had drunk the wine because wine was to be drunk, wine was to be used. After the wine was used up, the wine skins would still remain. It's important for the wineskins to remain wine because the same wineskins can be renewed and used again. Very, very important. God does not use and dump people. God is concerned with your life. He doesn't want to use you and dump you. And that's why there are servants of God who served God. Their time came and they left. But up to date, their names are still being mentioned. Their ministries are still continuing even when they are already there. God is not a God to use and dump. God does not forget your labor in the Lord. It's very, very important. And that's why we I'm talking about this renewal. Now, the Jews, after they had 
but they had harvested and processed new wine and they had put them in wine skins and then they had used the wine later on. You know, as wine stayed in the wine skins, the longer it stayed, the sweeter it became. If you remember the story or the first miracle Jesus did of turning water into wine, the first wine that they had was not as sweet as the last wine. And that is why the master of the ceremony marveled so much. He asked the groom, how comes normally in many weddings they would bring the best wine first and then the other lesser wine to bring it later? But in this case, what the miracle Jesus did in that portion of scripture is the water they had just drawn and put into those pots suddenly became so sweet it's like wine that had matured over time in the wine skins it was a great miracle that jesus did that was a miracle of acceleration is a miracle of taking what would have taken a long time he put it in it within a short time so when wine was matured over time in a wine skin it would be sweeter and once that wine had been drunk, the wine skin would remain to be used again when another harvest would come of, of, of the vines. And they would press the vines, they would get the wine again. They would go get the grapes and they would get the grape juice and prepare wine again. And so I want to talk to you, servant of God, you that were, have been used by God. We have some servants of God that today, when they stand to preach, they're just saying what God used to do. In the year 2000, in the year 2010, what God did, I saw miracles, I saw God doing this, healing the sick. But right now, you're not telling us what God did yesterday or what God is doing now. You're just talking to us about 5, 10, 20 years. It is good to remember what God did before. Because when I remember the story of David in the Bible, David was inspired by his testimony. He said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and also the paw from the, of the bear. Then David said, that God will deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. He used the past to give him inspiration and build his faith to face the current. And that's why it's important that in as much as we talk about the breakthroughs of yesterday, what is God doing today? I've listened to some great servants of God who says it's a dangerous and a bad thing to be where God used to be and where he is not now. And that's why it's important that we renew. Renewal is so important. I'm focusing on that word renewal. Because even when I read the Bible in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, 2, the Bible tells us, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer, to present your bodies as living sacrifice holy, pleasing, acceptable to God. He says, this is your reasonable act of worship or service. And then it says, verse 2, do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but, it says, but rather be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And why? So that you may be able to prove what the will of God is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. I am emphasizing on that word renewal. Brother, sister, you can be renewed. Your work with God can be renewed. I want you to know the children of Israel, they had to renew their covenant with God. They had made a covenant with God, but there is a time that covenant, they had to be reminded they had to affirm it. Renewal is a powerful thing. We need renewal, even in our work with God. And so just like that renewal I'm talking about, these wineskins were supposed to be renewed. Now, it's very important for you to understand the purpose of renewal. The reason is the same wineskin that carried the previous wine is in the same wineskin we want to carry the new wine. But the fresh wine that is coming now is so conk, is so acidic. If you don't renew, if the wineskin is not renewed, then it's going to break the wineskin. And then when the wineskin is broken, the new wine, the fresh wine, is going to be spilled and it's going to be lost. And I believe by God's grace that this word is coming to you because the kind of wine, fresh wine that God is bringing, that God is pouring in the body of Christ today, this kind of new wine requires vessels that have been renewed, vessels that have gone through the process of renewal, vessels that are like eagles that hibernate at the age of 30 so that they have a, a, new, a renewed beak, they have new talons, new scales, new feathers to take them another dimension in their lives. And so it is important that we 
understand this basic principle of renewal as a key ingredient to give you the push, the impetus that will be able to push you to your destiny to fulfill your purpose. Let me now focus on how did they renew the wine skins? How did they do it in Israel? That's a very important question. I want you to note this. I believe you have your Bible, you have your notebook, and I want you to get this. The process that they, they used to renew those one. The, 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 the wine skits, the old wine skits. And I want you to get this. Number one, they took the wine skins and soaked them in water. That's the first thing that they did. They took the wine skins and soaked them in water water. Now, they did not dip them in water and remove them. I said they soaked them in water. After they had soaked them in water, soaking means taking the wine skin, putting it in water, not for a minute, not for some hours. They would even be there a whole day or even days. Sometimes when we soak dirty clothes, we put them in water, they stay overnight. And when they say overnight, the purpose of soaking is to make the garment flexible. They wanted to make the wine skins flexible. Flexibility is very, very important as far as the wine skins were concerned. Because as they poured wine, it needs to be flexible. Something that is flexible is adjustable. It can, it, can, uh, it, can, it can carry change, the shape of what is poured in. It can, it can carry the shape of, of, of whatever liquid. Flexibility is important. And after they had, they had uh, uh, soaked the old wine skin in much water and they saw that the wine skins were now flexible, they would take the wine skins and then they would smear oil on them. They would smear oil. And they used to take olive oil and smear olive oil in them. Now, what is the purpose of smelling the olive oil? It is for strengthening the fabric of the wineskins so that it will be strong. Now, if something is not flexible, it means it becomes brittle. Those wineskins, because they had carried wine before, if they were not soaked, then they would become brittle, tight. That means they would easily crack and break and the wine will be spilled. And so soaking was for flexibility while oil was for strength. Now when the wine skins would carry wine and, and then just, just like, uh, like, like, like some vessel for carrying some liquid, if, if it is not strong and you put in a lot of weight, it would break because it was not strong. And so that is why they would come and take the wine skin and apply oil on it. And once that oil was applied on it, the wine skin would be strong. So two things would happen to the wine skin. It was soaked for flexibility, and then it was smeared with olive oil so that it would be strong. And when the two things were achieved in the wine skins, they would now pour fresh wine, kainos wine, into sorry, Neos wine into Kainos wine skins. And then that wine skin would be able to carry the new wine. And the wine skin would also be able to be preserved so that people, when a, few, for when a function, a ceremony would come, there would be wine preserved for people to enjoy the ceremony. Let me come to the application of this in your life. Servant of the Lord, if you're not going to be sucked in water so that you are flexible, then you're going to be brittle and you're going to break. What is the significance of soaking today? You have to be soaked in the word of God. Water is one of the symbols of the word of God. If you're going to be relevant, carrying the new move of the Holy Spirit in this generation, servant of the Lord, child of God, wherever you are, if you're going to be relevant, you have to be soaked in the word of God. And I say it sucked, not dipped. Because today there are people that are just dipped. They are wet for a, a short while and then they dry up because they did not take time in the word of God. And when I'm talking about the word of God, there's something that I want to bring to you that I will expound later on in another session. There is the difference between the Bible and the word of God. I want that to sink to you. 
There is a difference between the Bible and the Word of God. I have discovered there are many things that are biblical, but they are not what God is telling us to do. Today we have a lot of sects, a lot of denominations that have come up with all kinds of teachings. Their teachings are biblical. What is what does it mean to be biblical? It's in the Bible. We can quote book, chapter, and verse. It's biblical. But the word of God is, what is the message? What is God telling us? Very important. Very, very important. I want you to know uh, from the Bible, Genesis chapter 38, for example, I want you to see this. This man, uh, uh, Judah, went and took a wife from Adullam and gave birth to three sons. Er, Onan, and Shema. We know that in the Bible. It's biblical. And the Bible tells us Er was wicked and he died. And when he died, he had no children. And so Onan was told to sleep with his wife and raise children in the honor of the late. And Onan would go and sleep with his woman and spill his semen out. And, and then after that, Onan also, the Lord put him to death and Shema was there. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean that God is telling us that if your brother dies and he has no children, you can go and sleep with his wife? No. That is not what God is telling us. So in the community I come from back in, in, in Lua Nyanza, we have these kind of cultures where somebody dies and the wife is inherited by the, by the brother to the late. And some of them are saying it is in the Bible. True, it is in the Bible. It is biblical. But is God telling us to do it? That's the question. It is biblical. It's in the Bible. But what is God telling us? It is biblical. I've mentioned Genesis 38, Judah and Tamar. What happened? Judah and Tamar. Tamar tricked Judah into sleeping with her. And she conceived by her father-in-law and gave birth to, to Zerah and Perez. Now, is the Bible telling us to sleep, to trick our fathers-in-law and sleep with them? It's biblical. But is it the word of God? It's not the word of God. And that is why we need to suck. We need to study. Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, who rightly divides the word of truth. If we are going to be relevant and carry the new wine, the anointing, the revival in our generation, we must be a people of the word. Today, I know believers that are standing on the Bible, but they're not standing on the word. No wonder they get frustrated. No wonder they give up because they're standing. I know people that have mastered scriptures and there is a place for mastering scriptures. It's good to remember the scriptures. That is good. But until you assimilate them into your system and get the message of God, then let me tell you, faith does not come by the Bible. Faith comes by hearing the word. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's not by the Bible. It's by the word of God. And I want you to know, you can access the Bible and miss the word, but you cannot access the word minus the Bible. So the Bible contains the word of God. The word of God is hidden in the Bible and you need to extract it from the Bible and come to understand what is God telling us. If you're going to be relevant in these days as a child of God, not even as a servant of God, in whatever God has called you to do, whatever you may be in business, you may be in ministry, you may be in fashion, you may be in the media, you need the word of God. You need the word of God. You need to go beyond the Bible. You need to read the Bible. Then you need to meditate on that Bible to get the word. That is the word that will that, that will change your life. I want you to know salvation comes when we preach the word, not Bible. There are people who talk Bible, but they don't talk the word. What will change situations and change the lives of people is not just Bible. It has to be the word of God. Praise the Lord. And so the first thing that was required for the wineskins was to be sucked in the water, in the word of God. Child of God, wherever you are, spend time in the word, not just in the Bible. Of course, you have to read your Bible and then after that, meditate. Meditate on it. Get the final details. Get what is the message? What is God telling you? What am I learning from this portion of scripture? For example, that story in Genesis chapter 38, Judah and Tamar. 
That story was not to teach us on incest. It is true that was incest. But let me tell you, Tamar was not sleeping with Judah for sexual pleasure. She was not sleeping with Judah to get the wealth of Judah. She took the seal of Judah and the cord of Judah. Those are significant things that Tamar wanted. Because out of Judah, we know prophetically, the scepter of rulership was not to depart from Judah. She took the seal of Judah. That's why when she was to be killed, she said, I'm pregnant by the honor of this. And she will not die. And I want you to know, Judah and Tamar gave birth to Perez. And out of the lineage of Perez, the Christ came. It's so important. And we see what message is God giving us through that. That is now what is called the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is a mirror. It helps you to see yourself the way you are and the way you should be. The word of God is a fire. It burns. In Jeremiah, it says, it's not my word like a fire. It burns. The, 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 the work of a mouse, that is Cleopas and his friend, when Jesus was walking with them, they said, were our hearts not burning when he spoke to us? That is the truth. The word of God is a fire. The word of God is a hammer. It breaks. It breaks hard things. It breaks, breaks strongholds, the word of God. And that is why if you're going to be relevant in this generation, we need the word of God. The word of God is water. It cleanses. It cleanses. The word of God is a sword. It pierces. It is sharp. That's the word of God. Now, I'm not talking about, about Bible. I'm going beyond just quoting scriptures. I'm getting into the word of God. That is what will change. The message of God. The word of God. And so if you're going to carry the new wine, the new things that God is doing, you've got to be grounded in the word of God. You must rightly divide the word of truth. The word of God. Number two, because of time, I wanted to get it. They took the wine skins and they, after soaking, they applied them with olive oil. You need the word. And number two, you need the anointing. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to make you strong. You will not be able to carry the move of God without that anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you. You need the word and the spirit. Very, very important. The word and the spirit. Very, very important. The word of God and the spirit of God so that you are strong. You will be able to carry. You have the capacity to, 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 to carry the move of God, to be a vessel that can be trusted with the move of God. Today, I've seen many people that were anointed and the anointing broke them. When the anointing does not find a yoke to break, <laughs> sometimes it will break somebody. And there are people today that are so anointed and their lives are terrible with that anointing. Saul was anointed, but at the end of the day, he missed it all. He missed it all. And that is why it is important for us to understand the word and the spirit. I want you to know the boundaries of the word of God and the spirit of God determining how, how we would move, how we would do things. The revival, the new wine, of God that is coming for the body of Christ requires those two things. I'm here to encourage you, child of God. Most of you that once you testify of what God did, great things. I know there are people today that they, they are looking backward to some days, some years in the past that God used them mightily. They had visions, their dreams, they saw the power of God and they're wondering what happened today. It's because, check out on this, how well were you soaked in the word? And how well were you smeared with the oil of the Holy Spirit? When you get this, it's going to be powerful. Let me speak prophetically into the lives of somebody. There are people here that are in business. And you began business. For you to be relevant, kingdom business today, you need the word of God. You need the spirit of God in that business. Somebody, you are in the education. You are a lecturer. You are a teacher in secondary school, in primary, in tertiary in, in institutions. Wherever you are, you need the word of God. You need the spirit of God in that place where you're working so that you'll be able to fulfill destiny there. Somebody, you are in the fashion industry. Let me tell you, the book of Esther, Esther, Esther became queen. I, I believe Esther did the catwalk of their days and she won and became queen. And it was for a purpose. She knew, she knew very well that there was a word that Mordecai told her, do not reveal your identity. There was a word that she was shocked, she knew. And apart from that, she said, pray and fast with me. There was a strengthening that she needed so that she would go and face the king. 
She needed the word and the spirit. And I'm here to tell you, whatever you're going through, you that 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 nowadays you're looking with nostalgia how things were in the years before. You're wondering, where is God again? You're in the place where Gideon was. God, where are your acts that our fathers told us? I believe God is reviving his servants. There are fallen generals that are still there and are wondering, God, did you abandon me? He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I'm here to tell you, soak yourself in the word of God and then be filled, be full of the Holy Spirit, be baptized of the Holy Spirit and you're going to see that fire being rekindled. I, I, I love a scripture where the Bible says that as moldering weak, he will not snap out. Let me talk about this renewing. In, the, in, the, in the, my community, we, we had some small kerosene lamps. They would use kerosene and they had a, a tiny wick, and they did not have glass, they were open. And, 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 and uh, 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 the name that the Luos call it, they say, Otunga Guinero. It's called that, it's choking me with laughter. Because whenever this lamp was, you were told not to laugh, because if you just laugh, ah, it will go off. And this kind of kerosene lamp, sometimes when the paraffin was a little, when the paraffin was almost used up, you would see the flames just flickering. They were almost going off. The Bible tells us God is so gentle, he will not snuff out a small and weak. God is a God of renewal. Instead, he would pour oil, oil, so that the flame can shine brighter. I pray by the grace of God, wherever you're watching from, hear the word of the Lord is reaching you wherever you are. God is renewing your strength. God is rekindling your zeal. God is raising your, you back to prayer. You are given up. You get tired. Some of you are going to wake up doing your midnight prayers again. You're going to sense that burden, that call of God rising, that love of God. Some of you, as you'll be working, I see some of you, you, you'll be taking your lunch break to go somewhere and just spend time with God. I see some people that sometimes even the environment where you are may not be so conducive for prayer and you've got to excuse yourself and you're going to take five or ten minutes even in your washrooms just to spend some time with God because God is the burden, the call is there, is a renewal. Your hair is going to grow again. You are going to serve the purposes of God. You may have made mistakes and lost it here and there because of sometimes we are human and we make error. I want you to know God is not against you. God is for you. And that's why this message is there for you. God is renewing you. You, an old vessel, God has not written you off. He is going to raise you up. And you that think your ears are lost, he is going to restore those years that have been, eat, been eaten by the caterpillars and the canker worms. I see God raising up a generation. I see Ezekiel 37. There was a great army, but now they were dead. There were valley of dry bones. And then uh, the, the Ezekiel was told, son of man, prophesy, let the winds come. And they came together. The bones came back bone to bone. Flesh came, skin covered them. And there was a great army. There is a renewal coming in the body of Christ. There is a revival coming. I want to speak to the generals of God. Some today are fallen. They are lying down. They are wounded. They have given up. They are almost throwing in the towel. I have a word for you. God is renewing you. You are an old wineskin and God is not going to give up on you yet. He is not yet finished. God is not going to change his purpose for your life. He's not going to change his plans for your life. You may have made errors. You may have committed mistakes and you're wondering, is there any chance I come to you with the word of God? God is renewing you. You are an old vessel that is going to be soaked in the word of God, that is going to be smeared with oil. And after a short while, you're going to carry fresh wine and that wine is going to be sweet. I imagine an old wine skin that is used to carrying wine, when it is renewed again, when it is used again, you're going to carry fresh wine that you're going to carry for the next generation. And I want you to prepare wherever you are. Get into the presence of God. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Be filled with the Spirit of God. There is a new lease of life. There is a fresh lease of life that is coming into you. You're going to serve God. That business is going to serve God. That marriage 
marriage is going to serve God. That family is going to serve God. That job is going to serve God. People hurt you. People offended you. I talked about dealing with an, an offended, uh, with a, a wounded spirit. Now you are coming out of your wounds, out of your complaint, out of your murmuring, out of your excuses because God has called you. He has called you. He is a jealous God. He is not going to share his glory with another. God is not going to watch the investment that he had put in you go to waste. And that's why I challenge you, child of God, rise up, suck yourself in the word of God, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Great things are coming up in your life and we're going to see you again lifting up the banner of Jesus. Let me pray for you wherever you are. You can lift up your hand. Father, I thank you for your children. I thank you for your sons and your daughters. More so they that you had used. Some of them were wounded. Some of them were so offended and they gave up. Some of them have dragged behind as far as their calling is concerned. But today, I pray that as they get sucked into the word of God, you are going to fill them with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, they are going to carry new wine, even for their generation. They are going to fulfill your purpose in their generation. I pray that Spirit of God come upon them. Come upon them. Holy Spirit, come upon them. Let there be a renewal. I rebuke that voice of condemnation out of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare freshness. I declare freshness. I declare revival coming in their hearts. I thank you, Lord, and I glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you so much. Looking forward to having another session with you in the next session. Have a blessed morning.